we are going to be watching The Cost of Concordia by Internet Historian. I believe this is about a, a, a ship, right? A ship? He didn't pray to Poseidon before the voyage clearly. <laughs> True. I can still smell the buffets from their five restaurants. The sheets in her 1500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Is this better? Costa Concordia cost $570 million <gasps> to build. $570 million? You could really tell. For wherever you are. <laughs> I remember it like it was just a few years ago. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Rome. And we were making our way to Savona. Savona? It was day two of our seven day journey. But that ship, I, she was It cursed. was cursed? Oh my word. When she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne oh. bounced right off the side instead of smashing. A bad omen. But I'm not the superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th <laughs> of January 2012, on the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic. On a ship that's also only safety rated for two- Let me just preface this by saying whatever is going to happen in this video and what is shown, I am not responsible for it. I probably should have made a disclaimer in the beginning. I am not responsible for any of this, okay? Compartment flooding, especially not when you have a five-star max level captain like Francisco Scatino. A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. What? He knows exactly what to do in case of an He's emergency. He's certified. I for believe example, him. When he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. Oh. And in 2010, in Vernemont, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. <laughs> I've got a good feeling. And they put him in charge? They continued to put him in charge? Great track record. <laughs> so let's set the scene. It's a beautiful evening. People are having fun on the slides, drinks at the bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. And the ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals <laughs> hate it, but the customers love it, and it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain, comes into the dining hall with the lady, Dominica Samorton. Remember this face, because you'll be seeing a lot of uh -oh. it later. What did she do? Scatino what eats did she dinner do? with her and socializes for a little while. Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 oh feet from the island of Gilead. God. And how are they going to determine Why did they think this was smart? Well, the, the captain is going to eyeball it. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Oh. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman, Jacob Russlibin. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price. And he's huh? a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. Oh. It's his first time steering a massive ship, and he's very excited. And so they hired somebody whose job resume was being a painter and a cleaner. As for for a, a job position to, to to steer a ship? Am I am I hearing this correctly? Am I hearing this correctly? This is what I mean, chat. I don't like to interfere with, like, human error. Okay? At least we think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English I would not hire very well at all. somebody who's only start, certification the on, on their resume the as being a painter and a cleaner as somebody to steer a boat. Now, don't be confused by these numbers. They're just the degrees on a compass. At the same time, the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. Oh We're going my closer God. than we've ever been before. 
the captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, <gasps> that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the cue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. But before we talk about that, oh my let's God. talk about another big problem. Language barrier. Because at this point, the captain says, 325. But the helmsman relays, 315. So the first huh? officer intervenes, and he goes, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. I don't like where this is going. 335, which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The helmsman confirms 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. However, the captain should and would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third <coughs> officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're what? not doing it. 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. Do they not the realize there are other human beings on this boat that could get actually really hurt wing. from this? That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. A few seconds pass, and then the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. Oh the Costa God. Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Ah! Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Oh, shit! Scatino immediately commands the ship to start turning away. 335! Oh Not enough. my god. The captain shouts, 340! The captain yells, 350! <coughs> now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, yes. that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. <coughs> What they've got is under Excuse me. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order of 350, right now the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly that enough is to not. miss the rock. Mm -mm. And oh no, it's about to get worse. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back, 350 starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. What a dick! Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder. This captain is pacing me off. Like, what? Why, why, what is the point of all of this? Why does he want to get so close to the shore? Is it because he wants to riz up this girl and be like, yeah, you want, you want to see the shore? You want to see the shore? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get closer. I'm close, I'm close, I'm close. <laughs> Why? Instructions. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Port 10. But the helmsman only gets to port 5 before another order is given two seconds later. <laughs> port 20! They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port, undoing the swing. Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too, too, too late. late. Yeah. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. No! Hard to port. The second officer yells, we're gonna hit. Collision. They're so stupid. They are actually so fucking stupid. Not my spaghetti! This is why I don't interfere with mortals.
and their ships. This is why. I don't think the captain deserves to be saved. Downtown Nordtown. Oh no, it's, it's another 56, ad. Plain Russian roulette. Okay, I'm not gonna I skip it because it, it, it looks pretty quality. Gonna drink or buy yourself? Yes. Somebody has to. I hear you're a man who's good at finding folks. I'm many things. I'm looking for this fella. I got to find him. It's breaking my little heart. I'll see what I can do. I have contacts and thousands of I'm gonna love of the rest of the story. Of oh the no, door. that doesn't sound good. Like that, she was gone. The only thing she left was a calling card. Sometimes when you follow a case, it follows you back. NordVPN can protect my online data. But who can protect me from myself? <laughs> when they said this job gets easier, it was just another lie. Forensics found his password spread all the way down the block. In a perfect world, we'd all use NordVPN. But I guess this isn't that kind of story. I took the brakes off my car. Man like me never really learned how to stop. <laughs> Fuck off. I took the steering wheel out too. I let the road take me where I'm supposed to be. What is happening? That's right, Toots. Your husband's dead. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Go to NordVPN.com slash internet story for a huge discount on a two-year plan. <laughs> Why are these so well edited? I need Ad to know. Uh. The ship hits rocks on the port side. A 53-meter gash opens up in the hull. And thousands of tons meters. of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside is trapped and terrified. There's confusion no! across the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the Are these scenes from the Titanic? On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow <laughs> to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Oh my god. Lights, electrics, god. The water pumps too. Everything. The captain orders I mean, the at least they're close starboard. to shore now, This right? is the final position of the rudder before power to that too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard, plunged into absolute darkness. A quick breakdown of the flight. What a smart guy. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six more slowly, four shortly after. Then seven, eight, and three. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially, though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. Oh, that's These not good. These main generators give power to the whole ship. From propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions, pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless sinking cage. A few seconds later, oh the emergency God. batteries for internal lighting and communications kick off. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage. And it caused a huge panic in the theater as passengers are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations. I People mean... already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Start okay, good. Try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. There's no need for vests. Please return to your cabins. The emergency generator starts. All of the watertight doors close except for door 12, what? which is jammed. With the captain what? Pilot, the chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? Yes! Yes! There's water, you can't go down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps, I'll let you know. In the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd. Further <laughs> what is wrong with mortals? 
what is wrong with them? Like, this whole thing is actually kind of getting me kind of mad because it's like, this was so avoidable. For the increase in panic, on the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. Let's just say we have a blackout. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments five, six, and seven are flooded. Announcements are made. The captain to inform me that due to an electrical fault. So they're gonna lie. We're currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to. That was more than a blackout. I'll inform you of developments as they occur. Thank you for your attention. Coincidentally, at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing "My Heart Will Go On." And very much want to in this situation. The captain calls the cost of crisis. Roberto Ferrari. He tells the crisis manager that, that they're assessing damages and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails. Anyway, oh around God. this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. But not too close, right? A panicked right? passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is mm -hmm. tilting. So, she contacts her daughter in Italy. The daughter then calls the police, and the police call the harbour master. While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point that the ship is going down. Rip. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, He's the ship's wrong. stability isn't in danger. Wrong. Passengers begin going to muster stations on their own yeah, initiative. Yeah, go on the, the lifeboats. Says, we have a lot of I people at muster stations him. that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? Uh, about 20 minutes. Why is he lying? Did he ask passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. The harbour master is suspicious. He says... As a captain, right, you should know <laughs> that you are, <clears throat> like that one person said, you are responsible for every single soul on that boat. So why are you lying to the people that could help you and save these people? That is so incredibly one just fucked up and so selfish incredibly selfish to his superiors that he thinks <clears throat> something more is going on he calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship another problem the fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire the captain is on the phone to the lower decks asking pointless questions like is it still flooded yes Yes, it is. The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. The harbor master calls again. Finally, he says, the ship is taking on water through an opening. Because his poor reputation. Because he knows that no he doesn't have a good reputation when it comes to being a captain, so he doesn't want another thing on his record. Boat. When in reality, they need a full rescue. With three compartments. How can you hide that though? Hide the fact that you that you crashed the really boat. Bad, and they are not going They're gonna to find out sooner or later. The Coast Guard orders every available ship to the scene. Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges, no problem. She said this despite knowing it was wrong and that it further endangered lives. Most passengers at this point, though, aren't listening to this nonsense and they're busy figuring out how to abandon ship. Bing, 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 bing. Local television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio oh feed from the bridge. Uh, Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. 
Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. The captain says, no, stay. Why? So what do we do? General emergency? The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandon <gasps> ship. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. But at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh. Perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity. No! And it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that, comes back. <laughs> and now that they're listing, this is like actual insanity. Too positioned to enter the water. There aren't enough readily available, and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the Harbour Master asks the captain about it, and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to manoeuvre it onto the shore. They know he's lying. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain then says to bottom out the starboard anchor. This is making me so angry. Like, I'm laughing because of how fucking ridiculous this is. I told you guys I was not responsible for this. This took place in my waters, but I was not responsible, okay? This bozo was. This guy was. I wasn't the one who crashed the, sh crashed the ship. So they drop out the anchors, but let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbour. They watch the scene Tobacco unfold. shop owner? As what the is the significance of the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios, but not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Why? Dimitri Christidis and Sylvia Koronica leave with him. The Why the did he get both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still Am I Filipino? Yes, I am. Mille reaches the helicopter base. The first helicopter, a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour-long flight south. Bozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. He then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's oh black box God. stops working. Oh. Apparently there are technical problems with it. That means, from here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. A oh. while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. It's, passengers it are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats return that to pick them up. That is horrifying. This is no, no joke. Oh my goodness. Not, not that is honestly so horrifying. Yes. Oh, that's her, the girl. Make, uh, film uh, movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. A second helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Oh, no. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learned that the captain has abandoned ship. The oh. captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually, I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a class. Uh -oh. Oh no! I just slipped and fell in there. I have no idea how I got in here. As well, head back to shore. DeFalco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. And the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the I captain have makes. No it idea what you're talking From about. here, we only have mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. But they say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. And among them is the captain. It's oh. not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there, 
And in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescue. What the fuck? A while later, a rescue boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbor. He speaks to the police. He better be arrested. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, and cry to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> then he goes to the harbor master Why are you to crying? receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30-second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. He only asked As me he where should. he could buy a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> but then you he quit right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. No! Captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? We were the last to leave the ship. No. All day Saturday, rescue a search for people on the ship. On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. The last survivor, Manrico Giampandroni, was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin service director. In the end, 32 people died. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. A crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia was the largest cruise seven. ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. Jesus Christ. Props to him for staying behind to help. Uh, this is so... This is so angering. I'm so... I'm honestly pissed. I'm absolutely, like, livid. Like, how could you let this happen? Absolutely horrible. But this isn't the end. It's just the halfway point. What most people know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and that the captain abandoned ship like a coward. But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. There they are. The deets. Rip. <laughs> The Costa actually? Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall, a casino, cha-ching, cha-ching. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. Huh? Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, Yoink. were now Yoink? Missed. Are they looting? High-end liquor, expensive furniture, dining sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, what? jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists, what the city tell me huh? as well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. Are they just looting? This tells a big fuck off bell. Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. <laughs> a patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were the inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four oh. men are charged with stealing and thieving and pinching. Yeah. Later on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. What? From the casino, postcards and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. Some Australian guy even made a listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. <laughs> and although there were plenty of bidders, what is eBay the internet doing its thing? It's just the internet doing its thing. I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to yeah, that. But first, we have to talk about someone else. Domnica 
Sir Morton. How was she significant to the story? I'm very it curious. It was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Oh! Intense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They both denied <laughs> their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although mm -hmm. she did later just admit friends. to the media uh -huh, that she found uh -huh, him uh -huh. handsome. And how could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. If she says there was no romantic <laughs> link between them. Some people I... like, would like to believe and they want to know I have something with him. It's more interesting. It's like, you know, some spicy, spicy. in the story. Mrs. Morton also loved the spotlight. Why don't I believe her? Why don't I believe her? And took several interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon her, she began making ominous threats to Scatina, saying he must confess, and that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? A package? And what was that package? <gasps> a loot box! Drugs, apparently. Huh? So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia. What? And not without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an aside, Scutino was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother what? and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched and no yeah, drugs guys, were... Yeah, guys, um, I heard cocaine, actually. Improves your hair quality, that's definitely why the cocaine was in my hair. Importantly ever found. How did we get here? Oh right, a helicopter. Sir Morton commented on it again the next day, and said, Actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. What? So she expected to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, how did we get here? Oh, yeah, right. how Sex did with we? the captain. Yeah. Divers it's always sex. Head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Sir Morton's lingerie and other articles of clothing uh -huh. as well as a makeup bag. They were getting the spicy. Was up, but they continued denying it. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. Oh, Lord. The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, <laughs> she admitted it. See, si. yes, si. I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. Uh oh. What is up, Troubler Nation? Oh no. I'm his wife with Seymour Can. Oh my God. <laughs> She and Scatino had been having an affair for several weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. Naturally, you she know, had that's another fair. confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the okay. second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. And today I die the second time. <laughs> Because, of course, people what find is she out talking something about? that I try to What is she talking about? Subsequent to the trial, she used her fame in Moldova to become a political activist, often appearing on television and radio and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. <laughs> It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, Girl power. yada yada yada. And interestingly, <laughs> part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, sure. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her inst. No, oh, God, not again. Oh, no! Was she on another boat or a plane? Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crociere. I mean, and their parent company, if Carnival 33 Cruises, people died, saw a share drop of 20... if 33 people died and technically the captain of the ship is responsible for them, wouldn't he be charged with murder? 3%. Dunpeat. 
Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost yes. belongings, and loved ones. Yes! Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. Mm -hmm. That was not the ordinary route. Yeah, the that is true. Was uh, taking uh, at the time. Murder, uh, negligence, and, and, and manslaughter. Not only taking yeah. at the time, the, the ship <laughs> was. Junior? Claiming that the ship was not approved to deviate from the route. But that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route, oh. and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response oh. to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That doesn't seem like small. enough. 11,000 euros, about that, that 000 doesn't 000 seem like enough. Is the minimum compensation under international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, were not too happy with this deal, and they refused to take the money. We think the offer is an insult for what these poor passengers went through. Oh my god, we you guys gotta stop rob, 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 rubbing my boobas. <sighs> Honestly, I don't think fourteen thousand dollars is enough. Chat. Compensation being offered is not commensurate. Later, mm -hmm. Costa Crociere would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a one million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa Crociere is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto the faces of six staff members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal mm -hmm. responsibility. Offered is not that is understandable. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. Is not they were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, oh, okay. especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. Probably more, right? New York attorney Peter René traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. <laughs> At René and René, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. And while on the job, a seventh case cropped up via mail. email. An elderly Asmin woman, Gold? Alona, said, Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. Ronai agreed to speak with her. However, Aww. there were some inconsistencies in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Oh. Odd. But Costa is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch. Still. Mr. Renai was suspicious. As he should be. Old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Ilona said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. Zolt Horvath? <laughs> Who is that? I'm crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai uh -oh. was still suspicious. Model laggy? Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Uh. uh Red flag, Petey. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Um, oh. There's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh-huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. Oh. oh. Yeah, that'll check out. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused, so Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen Mum. Yeah, I saw her today. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. Oh no, the jig was up. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. 
It's a miracle. And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And oh, I like I should believe you. Back to Budapest. After you lied to me saying you were dead. Because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, old Petey, I'm beginning to think that they weren't even on the boat. No. So it turns out this lady isn't her mom, it's just a neighbor. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. The law firm that never sleeps, call 1-800-664-7. Oh no! Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course! Means get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, thanks. Gregorio de Felt, the naval officer who shouted at Scutino to Vada a bordo caso, became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scutino to go down I am lagging ship. so hard. There, there's literally... Chat. Oh no, am I lagging? Guys, my PC is dying! My PC is dying. I don't have porn on another tab, shut up. And when the captain chickened Why out, should I be paying the for the lag? I'm the one who's monitor. suffering the most. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. Oh. When the captain first reported, just a blackout, DeFelco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. I'm not His actions for were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. It's not my fault this is Accordingly, happening. shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso were being printed by the end of the week, oh. others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, without warning, DeFelco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. Hear what I said, you've been demoted. DeFelco said that he had been passed up for promotion that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred Ask to. Ask Aura to give you more RAM! <laughs> 10 years of his career. Oh, DeFelco no. was Trez Furioso. And there was public speculation that it was owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delana, his former boss. Oh. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, Ah, uh, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity and professionalism to advance his career. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still serves there today. I'm the company <laughs> This whole entire story is a fucking mess. <laughs> Jail! The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town mm -hmm. in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed to this is general area. The old one, While not the under new house one. arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rye magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But goddammit, he must have some kind of charisma going on because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. Oh my god. Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with abandoning It's like this story, like the way he's acting reminds me a lot of that one story. I was watching this doc documentary on Netflix about this one uh, surgeon. His name was like Paolo Maccarini. Have you guys seen that one where like the surgeon was lying and um, he ended up having an affair with a journalist in hopes of saving his reputation because he was experimenting on his patients as a surgeon. It's actually a very interesting uh, documentary. I would 100% recommend it. It's on Netflix, it's like three episodes. It's, I believe it's called like Bad Surgeon. After I finished it, it bothered me for a few days. And then because he was experimenting on these patients, he was killing them. 
because he didn't know what he was doing, but he was pretending like he knew what he was doing. And then when like the media was questioning his ability, he was trying to cover it up and lie. And then he tried to get his journalist, a mistress, to try to cover for him. And it was a, it was a lot. Yeah. His ship. This dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. Oh. So, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino's. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. He touched me. Cyril, what? Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. A good mm. deal. Good deal. And that meant that what about the captain? was now all on his own. Yeah. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. That there was confusion over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took oh. authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony, he just scalped again. And he hasn't been found since. <laughs> After that, Ferrarini gave what? his testimony. So he just, so, uh, just fled? Don't have time to he just ran? Time. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, <laughs> causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month in prison. Oh my god. And but what wait, is this? This still the appeals. The appeals trial begins. And the verdict on the appeal? Surprise! Rejected. Rejected. So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. And the verdict on the final appeal? Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident mm -hmm. a titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. What Scatino a bozo. Was not I hope she was, was worth it. outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. So he, he, he got, he got jailed up in 2017? The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Beginning in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. Oh, nice. The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. That same weekend of the towing, Scutino that is so busy. much work. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, <laughs> flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. Anyway, so these are the things that I remember from the Costa Concordia. That sweet maiden of the sea. Oh and as God. for you, little fella. This entire video had made me, is, is like mind boggling. Well, it's time to return you. Yeah. There's no. 
I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts on this video. I think I feel like I got most of my thoughts out just throughout the video. How can you be so stupid? In my head, right? Like, I get that you want to say hi to the people near the shore, but at the same time, it's such a selfish thing to do when you know you're not going to be 100% safe. I just find that to be incredibly selfish. <laughs>